Hello. In this lecture, I want to show you the vision behind Pharaoh. Why are people taking part in Pharaoh? This will help you to understand where Pharaoh is going and why people use it. The basic idea is to create a tool, an infrastructure, which will enable people to reinvent their future, to use the web in new ways, to create new tools, new forms of computation, and so on. For this, the notion of an engine is very important. It means the infrastructure, the compiler, the services, and that sort of thing. On a twin track, there's the idea of creating an ecosystem in which innovation creates new things to give us a competitive edge and in which business can bloom. So how do we understand this metaphor of ecosystem? Via the teachers. There are 30 universities around the world which teach Faro. Via the research groups. There are 15 or so research groups doing software engineering, but not only that. Around the world and via the companies. The basic idea of Faro is not to be an academic language, but to be a language used by people in order to make money and live off their programming. You can see some success stories on the website. Here's the address. You can really see what people do with it. I'm often surprised at what people do with Faro. It's not just cool because we say it is. People do real stuff with it. You have to realize that for the development team, Faro is a vehicle. We're the guys in black around the Formula One car. We improve it every day. Faro isn't something finished. It's something that's constantly being improved. It's quite young for a programming language. It began in 2008. The more it advances, the more exciting its future looks. I'll say a bit about that. Most companies do web content now with Faro because the web stack is excellent. We're going to use Seaside in this course, but we can also use REST. There are several HTTP servers that are used. It's a company that developed Faro, the HTTP server. There's the microserver Teapot. You have the web sockets and identifications. Meta description of data to avoid generating automatic forms. Connections to databases, whether SQL or relational. And loads of protocols. Some come out every day. People make packages which cover these functions. Faro is open. What this means is that you can help and have an impact, but at least read and have access to Faro. One important thing which people have trouble putting into concrete terms is that Faro is a system which enables you. Here, I'm showing you a quotation from an American who changed a very fundamental aspect of Faro, the delay. It's a function for adjusting the concurrency in the system. He found that it couldn't be tested in isolation. He suggested changes in Faro, so these functions could be tested individually, and his changes were incorporated into Faro. What's really interesting, I'll let you read the quotation, is that he says he was really amazed that he could simply think of doing it and do it. And similarly with this slide, turtles all the way down, meaning there are objects all the way down. The creator of Seaside, who knew Ruby, Python, Scheme, Objective-C, developed Seaside in Pharaoh's ancestor. I asked him why he used Pharaoh. He said, because I could. I can manipulate the stack behind the programmer's backs and suggest an abstraction I couldn't in another language. This empowering is really very interesting. I want to talk about the midterm vision of Faro. What will Faro be in about five years? The core will be bootstrap, meaning we'll be able to reconstruct it from itself, which isn't possible at the moment. We'll have a better integration with OSs and C. 
we can imagine launching a Faro app in any C application. It'll be a more modular system with validated distributions. If someone writes an XML parser, for example, you'll want to know if it's passed all the tests, if it functions in whatever version of Faro, if the non-regression rules are satisfied. So really, using software engineering to validate what is made around the world so the people using Faro can be assured of the level of quality. There's an effort now to make tools more powerful than they presently are. The idea is to have a system that can adapt as well to a coffee machine as to the cloud. The Faro development team is working on this sort of thing. It'll soon be available for everyone. So Faro, with its aim to have an impact on real life and involve companies, has created an industrial consortium. The idea is to promote Faro, to sustain its constant development, to improve its visibility and provide support. Here are some members of the Faro consortium. There are small companies, but big ones too, like Lamb Research and Talis and a lot of universities and research groups.